What is up guys, this is Max Square, and in this video I'm going to be reviewing an application called Control Center for Mac. Now it's very similar to the Control Center for iOS, it's actually based off of that idea. This allows you to view your music, control your Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and a whole bunch of other options that we'll get into later in the video. Just before we get started, I'd like to thank the developer for giving me a free copy of this app. It's pretty cool, he gave me a coupon that said MacSQ and I was able to redeem that in the store and get a free copy of the app. So thank you for that and be sure to check out the link below if you'd like to purchase this application. So starting off, you'll get a little icon in your menu bar that'll allow you to change some of the options. You can adjust the location, so you can put it on the left, this will put it in the left middle. You can put it in the bottom left, right, bottom right, whatever, I like to have it in the bottom left. If you have multiple displays, you can select which screen you would like the control center to display on. Now there's an option at the top right here that allows you to adjust your brightness, but you can change that to adjust your volume. So for example, if you have a desktop Mac that doesn't allow you to change the brightness, unless of course you have a Thunderbolt display, then you might want to change this to volume. You have some other options to always display on top, so it just pins it to the top, you can have it launch when you start up, and there's some shortcuts and checking for updates and stuff you can adjust as well. My favorite thing here is the option to adjust the colors. Now, as you know, a big thing for me is, is able to adjust colors, your whole fonts, all that type of stuff, and the developer did a great job in allowing you to change these things. So you can turn off the panel shadow, you can take off the border, and you can adjust the panel blur here. I also like to change the panel color, so I go for a nice blue tint, and then you can also take the opacity, so if you want it to be full 100%, you can do that as well. The text is pretty hard to read when you first start up, so I changed that to a white, and once you've customized all these options, you're able to save this as whatever you want, so you can save it as Mac SQ, and if somehow you change it to glass or something, you can easily just jump back to that option. You can view some of the info on the licenses and the version and all that stuff, but I'm not going to get into that. Let's take a look at the actual app itself. So in the bottom left here, you'll see that we have our music playing, and we can adjust the volume on that and just hit play. We have all the controls there. And the album artwork does take a few seconds to update, whether you're using iTunes or Spotify. It just It's a second or two delay, but it works pretty smoothly overall. Next to that, you can view your CPU, which is a big thing I like to see. You can see it has a little graph here, and you can view your CPU, RAM, and then some other IP address and all that other stuff. You also have the option to show your clocks. Now, you can just add whichever clock you want. There are tons of options here, but there are a few missing. But the developer is constantly updating the app, so I'm sure there'll be more options to come. You can set an alarm, you have a stopwatch, and then you have a timer. The next to that, we have some basic system options. So we can tell it to hide our desktop icons, show hidden files, hide spotlight, and a bunch of other different things here that you can customize. Last option we have is notes. So we can add a quick note here. So remember to go buy something and then it'll just add that here and then you can check that on. Now this does not sync with your main reminders app but it's just something that you can quickly add so that when you're working you can come back to it and just check it off when you're done. So those are the options on the bottom. Up here we can view what hard drive we're using, which is pretty obvious. Next to that we just have our timer that will automatically start when you click it. It's just this little moon icon here. You can switch on and off your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And like I mentioned before, you can use your volume or brightness, whichever option you have checked. So that is Control Center. Let's go ahead and rate the app. So for concept, I gave the app a four out of five. Capability, three out of five. Compliance, four out of five. Customization, a three and a half out of five. Cost, three out of five. The app costs $10 and that's just a little too much for me. And this leaves Control Center with a 17 and a half out of 25 rating. Also scoring it a great rating. Now, this technically is between okay and great. And okay is a 15, great is a 20. So it was really just a matter of me choosing it. Technically, if you're rounding up, you would go to great but the app is pretty cool, so I gave it a great rating. Well guys, that is it for this review. I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video.